Hi to everybody. Just wanted to say how much I've loved hearing from Ablaze, these wonderful thoughts that you've been bringing on the Lord's Prayer. That's just been fantastic. Also, just to say we're very aware that most of you guys, the children and the teens, going back to school tomorrow, uh, we just wanted to say to you that we love you, we're thinking of you, really praying for you, uh, that God would help you at this time, because I know it's been so challenging for you all. Um, so we're back with Gladys, the Gladys story, uh, this girl who went on this extraordinary journey from North London out on that Trans-Siberian Railway and five and a half weeks later she arrives, doesn't she, at Yang Cheng, where Mrs Lawson has set up that inn for the muleteers and where the men come at night and uh, Mrs Lawson preaches these stories of Jesus. She talks about how he now walks among the angels but how he came and he walked upon the earth. Um, and the men are beginning to hear and to listen and something wonderful is also happening for Gladys. She picks up that language, having been told you'll never speak Chinese. She speaks it beautifully. And then a year in, uh, Mrs. Lawson, age 74, dies and Gladys is very much on her own. And Mrs. Lawson says to her, God called you here in answer to my prayer. He will provide for you. And then that amazing provision comes in the form of the Mandarin who offers to pay for her to go out into all the homes right across the region. Uh, she wrote after that time, I had longed to go to China, but never in my wildest dreams had I imagined that I would be paid to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ as I inspected feet. So she goes out and she's unbinding the feet of the children she said, this is my country now, these were my people. And in 1936, four years after she arrived, first ever Western missionary to do this, she gives up her British citizenship and she becomes a Chinese citizen. And then the work among the children starts, do you remember, with little ninepence and less, and then this little one, Bao Bao, precious bundle, and many others come, desperate ones, um, and they're gathered around Gladys and the orphanage grows. And the work in the inn continues and at night it's Gladys and others who are teaching the stories of Jesus and a spiritual work is happening out in these valleys and um, she hears sometimes the songs of Jesus being sung um, out in the fields as small churches are growing up. And then on the eastern side of Yang Cheng, there's that prison that she gets called to that riot and she, um, they, they tell her, you've got the living God, you go in and she prays that prayer of God, give me strength. And she gets into that courtyard and she, she, she hears her own voice shout out, give me the weapon. And the man gives up his weapon and, a, and it's the start of real reform in that prison and of some of the prisoners becoming Christians and also coming up to visit the innovate happinesses and it was there that she was first called away day the good one the one who does good things and then in 1937 it's the beginning of the run-in towards world war ii um, as japan invades parts of china and do you remember the christians in that region decide to go ahead with their their, their missionary conference and a thousand of them gather in that region and they have an incredible time as the holy spirit um, is poured out and a time of revival begins and um, on that final morning of that conference Gladys woke and hears that roaring sound and she realizes it isn't an enemy plane but a wonderful and amazing sight met my eyes hundreds of men and women were standing some were praying some kneeling some standing a power that I can only like liken to that of Pentecost swept over that place and in a moment I too was on my knees awed and full of great reverence God had come among them and then they say goodbye to one another and they know that the full-scale Japanese invasion is beginning to happen in spring 1938 the Japanese begin to bomb parts of northern China um, and many of the places are left in ruins and they also bomb Yang Chen and even the Inn of Eight Happinesses and on the day when that happens as the service taking place and Gladys and others are pulled out of the rubble um, and they're okay and they're more or less unharmed but refugees begin to build and gather in that area and the four times Yang Chen changes hands between the Japanese um, and the Chinese armies between 1938 and 1940. Gladys Aylward said there was the never-ending work of burying the dead 
comforting the living and attending to the wounded. There were armed bandits in the region. It became very dangerous and at times um, the children had to be moved um, up into the mountains where Gladys was known from the foot inspection work. They even at times were in caves for weeks at a time uh, being provided for by the villagers because Yang Chen became too dangerous. Everywhere there were food shortages and in the courtyard at Yang Cheng it became a kind of first aid station where they used to bring the wounded and in in the sort of muddle of all of that Gladys said she remembers all the time this little card was on the door or on the wall and she used to glance at it sometimes as she rus rushed past and it said God uses weak things there was an amazing letter that's been found that she wrote to her family um, and in the middle of it it's a kind of warning to her family not to try and get her out of the situation um, she 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 wrote, do not wish me out of this or in any way seek to get me out, for I will not be got out. Um, she was there and she was with them and she wanted to stay. But she became increasingly aware that she may need to leave that immediate area of Yang Chen. She was nearly captured by the Japanese at one point and she became worried for the children. And she'd heard that there was an orphanage being set up in Shenxi province, which was to the west of the province where she was, in a city called Xi'an. Um, and so she begins to prepare that they might take the children there. At the same time, things are closing down in Yangcheng and the prison is going to be closed. And they call her and they say, well, normally we would just shoot all the prisoners in this situation. And she pleads with them, don't do that. Let them go back to their families. So they go back to their families, but there's 10 of them left. Two of them are Christians, including Feng, who had co first called her our way day. And she gave a ransom and bought those two men and said, we'll look after them. But there were eight men still still standing there they would have been killed if she hadn't intervened and she said we'll take them the Christians will take them and those eight men two of whom were, had, had previously murdered people were taken by the Christians up into the villages and settled resettled happily up there then in the early spring of 1914 Gladys hears that there's been a price put on her head the Japanese soldiers have have issued a, a, a um, have put out posters um, and have put out word that they will give a hundred dollars reward to anyone who gives um, can give them information about where this small woman uh, the missionary woman is because they think she's a Chinese spy and so she becomes afraid for the children she's fearful that um, they they would uh, they would harm the children as well as her and and so that night after she, she hears about it she's beginning to think about this and then that same night the Mandarin arrives and he says the whole of Yang Chen is being deserted I have to leave now um, he said I've come to say goodbye but I wanted to tell you that I now worship your God your God has become my God. She wrote in her diary, my eyes were full of tears. In the midst of all this suffering, my God was still working. After years of sowing seed, he was allowing me to see it bear precious fruit in the heart of this honoured and powerful representative of old China. And that night she prayed with the leaders of the church and they said to her, you need to go, our way day, you need to go. Um, she's concerned about how she can take the children with her and alone in her room that night she cries out to God she opens her Bible unsure what to do and her eyes fall immediately on a verse and it says flee flee into the mountains that means run run into the mountains um, that was enough for me she wrote I had no more doubts I would leave the next day I went to bed and I slept peacefully this is a historic and amazing photo of the children gathered together on the morning that they left they've been promised grain uh, by the mayor of the town and uh, enough food for two days um, and men also to carry the food with them as they set out um, there was such concern that the main roads the main area had become militarized that they would have to go up and through the mountains, not on the normal straightforward route. They were heading for the Yellow River. That's where they needed to get to, to cross over and then get and head off towards Xi'an. And so they set off on what must have been the absolute journey of their lives. Here's a picture, an extraordinary picture. 262 miles, that was the journey. That red line marks, surprisingly, the Yellow River that they'd got to cross. On the first night, after walking all day, they slept in a Buddhist temple where they said rats were running round, but they were so tired they slept anyway. 
Then they set out across towards the mountains. They're helped by villages in places because they're still in the region that Gladys knew. She said day by day she would often shout out a text while the children were walking. She would say, Jesus Christ came into the world and they would shout back to save sinners. Um, and then they, she would teach them choruses and the chorus that they sang more than any other amazingly is a chorus we know and it says count your blessings it's a song about giving thanks count your blessings name them one by one count your blessings see what God has done count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done and it's a great marching song but over the next few days and nights food was becoming scarce they were sleeping in the open sometimes they heard bombers high overhead she must have remembered and thought back to that that incredible journey out to China she must have thought well God didn't let me down then one night they slept in in a cave where they were safe but when they woke in the morning they realized that the cave behind them was full of snakes after that they slept outside they became increasingly hungry and increasingly thirsty. Some of them, their shoes were wearing out. The days were hot and the nights were cold and they huddled together for warmth. But by day seven, great hunger gripped them. They had no food left. Incredibly, just at this point, they stumbled upon some nationalist soldiers, Chinese soldiers, who just had their, their, their rations restocked and they had lots of food and they fed and fed the children on that day. And so they journeyed on. By now they'd been on the move for 12 whole days and the children were only asking one question, how much further to the Yellow River? Are we nearly there yet? And then they reach the peak of the highest mountain that they had to cross. And one of the children runs back, one of the ones who's gone out on the head, and he's shouting, I can see it, I can see it. Gladys said, we climbed the final mountain, and there before us we saw gleaming in the sun, like a beckoning ribbon of gold, the yellow river. It was down in the valley beneath them. Um, Gladys said to them we're going down to where the ferry is this is a picture of the ferry uh, we're going to go down there and we'll be able to catch a boat across so they headed down to that river what Gladys didn't know was that just two days before the Yellow River had been declared a militarised zone and that all the crossings were now forbidden she couldn't understand as they waited there why there were no ferries. They were by that river for a day and a night. They had small amounts of food that they'd scavenged from deserted, uh, deserted homes that they'd passed. By the second day, she began to realise that no boat was coming. By the second night, she knew this for certain. She said, I was almost in despair. All night I worried and I prayed and I prayed and I worried. I was at the end of my tether. These were such honest words. Haven't we sometimes had nights when we've prayed and we've worried in equal measure? And then the third day dawned. They'd been there now for two days and two nights. And as they woke up on that third day, the older children began to realise that there wasn't a boat coming from them. It was now 15 days since they'd left Yang Chen. Then one of the older children, a 13-year-old girl, don't think that if you're only 13, God can't use you because, wow, he used this girl. And she said to Gladys, you told us that Moses opened up the Red Sea so the people could cross over. Why can't you part the Yellow River for us? And Gladys was quite annoyed with her and said, because I'm not Moses. And the child replied, but God is still God. His power is not diminished. He has as much power now as he had then. And Gladys said her words hit, hit her, um, almost like something physical. She was so broken down, but she lifted up her eyes now onto the living God. And she said, come on, guys, we're going to pray. And they knelt to pray. They got round in a circle and they cried out in prayer to God. And she cried out and she said these words, oh, God, I am finished. I can do nothing more. I am at the end. It is only you, Lord, now, you above. Oh, God, don't let us down. Save us. Prove yourself. It was a cry from her heart. And then one of the children began to sing again their favourite song, count your blessings name them one by one and they began to join in and they began to sing this song then we're gonna find out next week what happens 
Um, and after this, we're going to hear Fumi sing this wonderful, wonderful song. Oh God, would you help us, Lord, to count our blessings. How many blessings did they have then? They really only had you and one another. But we have so many blessings. Even today, this day, we count those blessings. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you continue to do for us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 